Sink the claps. Three, two, one. Clappy boy. I saw a funny video on Twitter the other day that made me so sad. It was somebody uh, being like, yeah, guys, I uh, I got a new microphone because my mic has been so bad the entire time, blah, 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 blah. Then they go to take off their microphone. They realize that they've had their mic facing the wrong. They've been speaking into it oh. backwards. It was an AT2020. They were speaking into it backwards for like two years. Oh, my <laughs> God. Nothing bothers me more than seeing people with like a microphone that you side address like a Yeti and it's pointing at their face. I'm like, yep. oh, no, what are you doing? Or even the Shure SM7B, but it's pointed straight up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Brand Leak, as Ethan oh! called it in a previous episode. Did you did, did you know you did that? Uh, no, I didn't. Was that during an ad read? Yeah. You said Brain Leak. That's B-R-A-N. <laughs> <laughs> a classic. If that's An not evidence classic. of our leakage, I don't know what is. Oh boy, oh boy. Welcome back to another episode, baby. I have a problem, Ethan. What's your problem? Tell it's me. Why don't you sit down on this chair? Fucking hot. It's been oh, so it's hot up. in England. And the AC in my room didn't turn on, so it's like 28 degrees in here. Which is, what, like 70, 75 Fahrenheit or something? Something like that. Between 70 and 75. What's, what's your room at? What is my room at? Well, I want to turn on the AC a little bit. Uh, it's probably 72 degrees in here. Oh, that's like that. toasty too. What is wrong with it's, us? It's a little, it's a little toasters. Uh, I, it's raining here in LA. Excuse moi I know. Rain. <laughs> You'd never believe it, folks li listening at home, but here in sunny Los Angeles, it's, uh, <laughs> we've got to make my voice, uh, sound like it's coming from an old microphone and I'm a newscaster or something. Hello everybody, good morning Los Angeles. Today we've got a, uh, or maybe, maybe, hold on, maybe it's like I'm flying on a plane. Maybe it's like I'm a captain on a plane. Okay, okay. ready? Let's, let's take it from okay, the top. Okay, three, two, one. <clears throat> Hello everyone, this is your captain speaking. Uh, we're coming into uh, sunny Los Angeles today, but uh, it doesn't seem to be so sunny. Uh, it's currently raining down on the ground. Uh, we've got a nice headwind at 40 knots coming in. Jesus, the plane uh, is crashing! Uh, help! Help! Uh, <laughs> why is the pilot like, drunk? A, a plane going down and the pilot comes on and he's just like, <laughs> We are uh, crashing towards the earth at uh, an unfathomable speed. No one will survive. Uh, uh, if the flight attendants could please take their seats, uh, we will no longer be serving water or coffee at this time. Thank or you. Or air. You are going to die. Thank you for sp flying Spirit Airlines. <laughs> All right. Thanks for flying Ryanair. God, I just went on a flight to New York, oh. and my dad was like, oh, sick, you're going to New York? And I was like, not New York City, somewhere random in the state, and there's nothing uh, happening upstate there. Upstate New York. Uh, and I've never been on an airplane that was so goddamn cold. I was shivering in my britches the whole time. And well, I went, please, fam. Please. <laughs> Spare a hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that's better. It's better than it being in hot. Yeah. Whenever it's too hot in a plane, I reach up and I turn on the thing. And then there's a lady next to me and she's like, I'm freezing. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's hotter than Satan's britches in here. She goes, I'm freezing. And you go, I'm Jack Septic Eye. Deal with it. All right? No, I'm freezing. I just fucking deck her in the face. Don't you ever talk to me. That's at least $200. Do not look me in the eyes, please. Go, go full Ellen DeGeneres. Like, Isn't that... Or, or was it Will Smith that people said wouldn't allow people to look them in the eye? Oh, uh, I think it was Ellen. I think it was Ellen. Yeah, something about like, don't Almost look positive. at her. Like a fucking Medusa head. That's definitely Ellen, but uh, punching or slapping was Will Smith. <clears throat> yeah. Can you believe that C Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars? He That just happened. That's how far ahead on podcast episodes we are. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars? Have you seen that lady on TikTok? 
know, but that sounded like Trump a little bit at the, at the start. <laughs> Have you Can you believe, believe that Will Smith has a... Uh, now, I don't, I don't know. Great people on both sides. Both sides. <laughs> We don't know for sure, but it seems that uh, Chris Rock, great guy, fantastic guy, he <laughs> slapped Will Smith in the face. Or was it the other way around? I'm not sure. I don't China. know. I wasn't there. Um... <laughs> Puerto Rico. Mm. <laughs> great place, Puerto Rico. Mm. Do you think it's uh, the rain outside your house is like acid rain now? Because it's L.A.? I hope so. When, when hope you so. were growing up... Didn't you think that like acid rain and quicksand were going to be like way bigger problems in your life? I saw a video recently of somebody sinking in quicksand and their friend helped them get out, but it was like it was it was a casual. They knew that the quicksand was there. They were like, "Oh. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. If you're in quicksand by yourself, you're uh that's a problem, but if you're in quicksand and there's other people around, it really didn't seem to be that big of a deal. But I did think that quicksand was going to be a big issue. Yeah, I and thought like not. on the way to the shop to get sweets. I thought I'd be like, yeah. "Watch out for sinkholes and quicksand. It could be anywhere." That in the Bermuda Triangle. I heard about the Bermuda Triangle so much growing up and I was every time that we flew on a plane, even though we we didn't go overseas, and I guess that's the only time that that would probably it be happening. It didn't matter. You were but, young. <laughs> but I was like, we can't. We're not flying over the Bermuda Triangle, right? I don't want to meet Amelia Earhart. Not like this. <laughs> I want to know what happened to the plane, but I don't want to be a similar situation. Growing up, did you were you a big cryptid believer? Yes, and that goes to all of you out there. <laughs> I wanted things to be real so bad. I, mm -hmm. so, story, story time. Everybody get your ears ready. Oh, perk it up. Get your little blanket. <laughs> I thought I was going to get killed by a banshee when I was a kid. Because oh. they're Irish. And then our friends were talking about, it's something about like, if you talk about a banshee, you're like, call it three times or something. I don't know the actual lore on them. It's like a it's like juice. the Bloody Mary thing. Yeah. Is Bloody Mary a banshee? Oh, banshee Mary. Because Banshees are just like screaming women that kill you or something, right? Yeah, in my mind, they're just like floating legless ghosts. Jamie, pull it up. But if you um, if you talk about banshees, it's something like your somebody in your family will die. So we were in like my friend's house, and it was like three of us, and they were talking about banshees not, not a lot. And I was like, guys, no, don't do it. The banshees <laughs> don't talk will about get it. Us. A banshee is a female spirit in Irish folklore who heralds the death of a family member, yeah. usually by screaming, wailing, shrieking, or <laughs> keening. I don't know what keening is. What's keening? Are you keen to be dead? <laughs> Are you fucking keen to be dead, bud? Are you, you fucking, do you like your ma, do you? Well, I'll fucking take away if you're fucking keen on it. Why my dog? How's it going? <laughs> your comment when we recorded last when we were talking about uh, the Grump tour and Conor McGregor being like, "Who's not so Grump? <laughs> <laughs> who is not so Grump? I don't fucking know who he is. No, don't fucking talk to me." <laughs> so funny. Wait, but what happened? What happened after this? You started talking, and then I described the banshee. I went home and I thought I was like paranoid that a banshee would like come into our house. And I had like a, a vague image of what it would be, like big, long, stretched mouth. And they'd just be like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you guys, you guys don't have folklore in America, do you? Do you have like specific ghosts that, are, that aren't like based on other cultures? I don't think so. I know that like in certain places, there's certain things like, uh, like the Jersey Devil. Or Mothman. Or Alex Jones. <laughs> exactly. Stay the fuck away from him. <laughs> I yeah, there's like certain certain things in, in certain places, but I think that a lot of them are based off of other things. Uh we didn't have anything in Maine, I don't think. You didn't have any You live in Stephen King's home. I know. We just had fake stuff. I mean they're all fake. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, according to you. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, oh, this guy's gonna get bansheed so hard tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get bansheed. She's gonna ban on my she till I scream. <laughs> I wanted the Loch Ness Monster to be real so bad. Growing up, I was all about Nessie, baby. I would go to the library all the time and 
always look up stuff about the Loch Ness Monster. I loved it so yeah. damn much. And, you and there like, hasn't been a sighting in a long time. You'd get like the internet and then you realize that once the internet proliferated that none of the shit was real because it all died down. Like Loch Ness UFOs. I wanted UFOs to be bad, to be real so bad. <gasps> there was a really freaky time when I was a kid. And I don't know what I saw, but I was outside with two of my friends and we were talking about something, it was really dark, I lived in rural Ireland, so it was just like pitch black and you could see the stars in every single one of them. And I remember hearing this like sound in the distance and I looked up and there was a star, well what looked like a star, and it got really bright and then just stopped and the sound disappeared. And I was like, what the fuck was that? What the hell? I still don't know. What was it? You tell me. Well, we, like a year or two ago, the U.S. Navy was like, yeah, here's a bunch of footage of uh, of stuff. You heard about this, right? Yeah. Nobody cared. The U.S. Navy was like, yeah, here's a bunch of footage. We have no idea what this was. Yeah, and here's our pilots also not knowing what it is. We're, we all as a society were like, oh, okay. Now see, it, it, it has to happen in front of us. We have to see, like, Independence Day. We need to be like, oh, please fuck me, alien daddy on the rooftop. Yeah, that's what I would do. I mean, you, you gotta try. I've never seen anything that I couldn't explain. <laughs> you know? I've never seen any phenomena. Explain these juicy cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> explain this. <laughs> My body is in shambles. Every day I wake up and I just don't feel right. Are you sick? What's going on? No, I just, I just am not taking care of my body. I'm not getting the, the right vitamins and minerals that my body needs. I see what happened. You're hurting when you should be squirting. That's right, John. Squirting some of that AG1 from Athletic Greens into your water to down. What's Athletic Greens in AG1? AG1 from Athletic Greens is a nutrient powder that you can put in your water and take because it makes you feel good. It gives you all the nutrients, the vitamins, or vitamins, however you want to pronounce it. It gives you everything you need. You mean I don't have to take a thousand horse pills every day just to get some vitamin D and other things that I need into my system? No. It's, I get it. It's hard for me to keep up with supplement routines. You know, you got your pill, you got your other pill, you got your third pill, you got your oil. You got all these things that you need to put in your body to keep your body tip-top shape. Keep this old clanger booking along. I just put one powdered supplement into my water and I get it all, baby. I don't need to do anything else. I even got another extra little vitamin D dropper. Just one little drop into it on top of that. Got everything I need for today. Get me going. Well, if I wanted to get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with my first purchase? Where would I go to do that? I think, uh, if we're reading the same thing, I think you would go to drinkag1.com slash leak. That's drink? Did, did you take that? Did you take it in? That's drinkag1.com slash leak? Yeah, you put that out into the world like I put AG1 into my <sighs> body. Athletic Greens. Go get it for yourself. Try it out. Supplements. Make yourself feel good. We're all gamers. We stay inside all the time. We don't do what we should be doing. I'm excited to feel good and not die. No. Feel feel great. Athletic greens. And you want. Put it in your body. I did go on my friend uh my friend Jordan Detune. Uh he does uh a paranormal stream and he goes to a bunch of different places with different people. Uh and so I did one with him. And there was a couple things in the house where I was like that was weird. Um but the biggest thing was uh like the whole house was creepy, but we entered into this one room, and as soon as I crossed the threshold, it was just like, "Ooh, <laughs> I don't like it in here." <laughs> Did you feel a chill? Was it cold? It was just like my gut instinct being like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, this mm. is bad vibes," and like <laughs> I don't really know how to describe the feeling, but that was definitely the worst part of the whole thing. Was just like stepping into that room and immediately being like, "Ooh." I don't yeah. like it in here. I shouldn't be in here. And my body being like, you need to get out. You're going to fucking die, dude. You're going to fucking die, dude. I'd be good at convincing myself that something bad was going to happen. Mm, that's anxiety, baby. 
Oh, yeah. I don't normally like sit around <laughs> thinking, oh, ghosts are real. But then when you're in a place at nighttime with no one else around, it's like, yeah, ghosts are real. Loch Ness is here. Uh, my my dad is going to like show up and be like, hey, <laughs> like, dad, you, you died. <laughs> like, He's going to show up and go, hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, slugger. Yeah. It's like, why are you American now? <laughs> we all turn American in heaven, son. Have you uh, have you ever experienced any ghosts, ghouls, goblins? I thought I did one time, but I think I just convinced myself something happened. And then it's like, you know how people misremember things? Like you can't trust people's you can't trust people's memory in court solely because that people's memories exaggerate things and forget things all the time. So I think I went out to the shade at our house where we had like firewood and stuff. And I, I remember going in, picking up stuff. I heard something and I looked over and I saw like a a white, like long thing in my vision. And then it just like whisked away. Now, could it have been a trick of the light? Could it have been the fluorescent bulbs or my fucked up vision? Sure. But was it a ghost that was there for our firewood? Absolutely. Gets cold in the afterlife. That's, you know, ghosts often are stealing firewood. You can see him in the night with bundles in their arms going, yeah. ha, 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 hoofing it down the road. We did, um, we went on a camping trip with Scouts or Cub Scouts. I talked about them before. Big deal. Whatever. Both sides. Great people. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> we went on like a retreat where we all just stayed in a giant like, like hall, like a gym kind of area. And they were telling us a story about somebody that would like, I can't even remember the ghost story. It was somebody like come in the night and kidnap you. And I remember like thinking, I think I was like half asleep, half dreaming it, but like a face up against the window. And I was the only one awake and everybody else was asleep. Ugh. Awful. Yeah. Awful. Awful. I I have never seen anything crazy. But when I was growing up, I uh, I had a lot of like hallucinations in my dreams. And I would like wake up and think that I saw something. Like one night I... I woke up in the middle of the night and I hallucinated somebody at the end of my bed, like slowly oh. crawling up. And I just immediately was like, ah, sheets, that'll save me. <laughs> <laughs> and the it, power and of it detergent. Did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's why ghosts are always in like sheets? Because everyone gets scared and goes, ah, sheet. <laughs> oh, maybe that makes sense. It's the only thing. It's that the or they just run through like clotheslines all the time. Mm hmm. God, it's the only thing that'll uh, that'll make them visible. <laughs> it's like the uninvisibility cloak. Yeah. Did we show you the movie Host when you were here? The like Zoom call horror movie. No, but I have I have seen that movie. Yeah, that scene where she like throws the sheet and it like lands on the dude and it's like, Ooh, the real. <laughs> yeah, that was a good movie. I like that movie. That's a great movie. It's an hour long. It was fun. It was made during COVID. It's very simple. It's easy. It's just easy, good fun. You know? Good, clean, Christian horror. We should go on an adventure to Loch Ness. And I, I don't think that in recent years people have really been putting any effort into it. You know? So I think that we could solve it once and for all. Yeah. I remember looking up so many videos of Loch Ness Monster being like, they just don't have the technology to scan that deep. They would have done it if they had it. James Cameron going down to try and find the Titanic. It's like, why is he not going down to kiss Loch Ness Monster? I don't know. And there's all these underwater caves down there. Yeah, hollow earth. What? Hollow earth theory. What is that? Under the earth is actually just a bunch of cave systems where giant creatures live. Oh, I don't know yeah. anything about that. Is that similar to chemtrails? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> same boat. It's, it's in the same category as flat earth. Yeah. It's like flat earth, flat earth is so easily disproven, but it's like, why can't you just come up with like hollow earth or something that's cooler that people have a harder time disproving? Tell me, tell me about hollow earth. I want to learn about it. I only know it from the Godzilla movies and I don't know if it's a thing people actually believe, but it's, it's a thing that like, there's tunnels all under the earth that we just don't know about and a bunch of like extinct creatures or creatures we don't know about or like Loch Ness monster goes in that and comes back out somewhere else and it's kind of like, Time and space is kind of like different down there. And Do you think they're all kissing down there? Yeah. Could be. Kissing, Could pissing, be. shitting in a fucking... No, we have to go through one episode without talking about shit. Hey, <laughs> you brought it up. 
<laughs> you didn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy that's a cool theory i like that theory it's so much cooler than flat earth flat earth is like we've been in space we can see the earth is not flat or have we been in space that's true we can't prove it you know the moon landing was fake because lasers or something and no we can't we can't prove it because we left a reflective disc up there and we can fire a laser at it and it comes back uh Okay. So it's it's pretty easy to prove. But Hollow Earth! They have no idea where these tunnels go! Where's Loch Ness Monster? They live in a different lock now. Ah, oh, man. They were like swimming around and everyone's like, oh shit, they're on to us, guys. Nessies, let's go! And they all swam into a hole and came out somewhere else. But you know how back then there wasn't this technology where you could post about tweets. So how did so many people have the same experience, you know? Yeah. You know? Had to be real. I think the Loch Ness Monster is dead and gone. But maybe once upon a time in the early 1900s, it was swimming and swamming around in there, eating salmon and other things that live in there. <laughs> and people. And people, maybe. Who knows? That is the thing. Who knows how many children died to Nessie's jaws? Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe Abominable Snowman, Yeti. Maybe that was just one guy. Mm -hmm. Now he's dead as well. He was in the mm -hmm. hills going like, oh, I'm so lonely. I mean, you ever seen monkeys before? They're pretty big anyway. That's I don't true. think that it's too far fetched to think that there was a big old monkey guy living in the in the in North America. Yeah, just a gorilla that went through the hollow earth and came out somewhere else. Yeah, oh man. That's what volcanoes and earthquakes are. It's just hollow earth going. <laughs> oh, it's just someone farting down there. And it's <laughs> making the whole earth rumble. Yeah, the dinosaurs all have to get away from it. <laughs> oh man, dinosaur. we should bring them back. I, I saw a TikTok of a lady the other day that was like, dinosaurs weren't real. It was just something that nerds made up just to have something to talk about, to make something cool. I was like, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, all right. Where did the cool. bones come from? Yeah, we did we plant those there? Think about Could've. the bones. Could have, I suppose. It's the aliens. The aliens came and planted the bones for us to find to make sure we look down and not up. <laughs> I've, I've seen really funny uh, clips on TikTok of this guy that has, like, a fake podcast. And he's like, this is what every dude's podcast is. And he's like, can I blow your mind real quick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it always revolves around, like, money and stocks and women. Yeah. I saw one that was like, you know, they say that... Uh, they say that the the moon is 300,000 kilometers away and if you break that down into into lions <laughs> that's 192,000 lions in distance but uh they say that there's only 30,000 lions left on earth <laughs> it's just like saying so. nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's like that doesn't make sense. It's like that <laughs> TED talk from the guy who like does a TED talk about nothing. He's like, if you look at the numbers here on the screen, and it's just like three, nine, <laughs> seven. <laughs> it's like you'll see a sequence and a pattern happening. <laughs> That's it. What would your if you had to do a TED talk? I got asked to do a TED talk once, and Same. I was like, I'm good. Thanks. It was, it was like a TED X talk because the mm -hmm. the real TED talks are like for the real big guys. Yeah, mine was also TED X. Yeah. I, I was thinking about, like, charity streams or something. Since, to toot the Thankmas horn a little, we have the single, good, good. the largest single day event money raised ever. Really? For Thankmas last year. That's fucking sick. There's another stream that they did in France, I think, that was over two days or more than 24 hours, and they raised 11.4 million. And I was like, if I had known that, we could have pushed Thankmas past that and we would have been the largest fundraiser in history in a single event. <laughs> Next year, baby. This year. Or this year. That, well, that's what I mean. Yeah. December 9th. Oh, you've already got a date? Yes, sir. Everyone save the date. I also have the charity picked. You should make a save the date. Like a wedding Ooh, for Thankmas. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? Save the date, and it comes with, like, a little date fruit. And it's like, put that in a Tupperware. 
save it. <laughs> no? Was that a bad yes and? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone everyone eats the date at the same time. On the at date. The, <laughs> on the date. At the end of Thankmas, you're finally allowed to eat the date. Yeah. Mm. Well, if we're doing this, yeah. if to talk about ideas that we'll probably never do, if we're doing oh, this Christmas yeah. album, which Aaron did say he's in on. Oh, hell yeah. We should release that for charity. There should be a charitable oh. component to it. Oh, should we release oh. it only physically? We make a bunch of CDs. We could, and then when the charity thing's done, like a couple of months later, we could release it for everyone. Yeah, just to just to just to sell out for charity a little bit, because we gotta raise money. I'm trying to think of like as many different ways I can raise money, where I give something back, or people don't just sit there and go, "Here's money." <laughs> it's like, how do I how do I bleed every company dry before people have to start donating? Like they have all the money, give back, please. I think. I think that you should just do a sponsor segment of the thing where you get as many companies as humanly <laughs> possible and just be like, I'm going to sit there and read out uh, ad reads for an hour. Yeah. Whoever whoever wants like a 60 second, two minute spot. Uh-huh. Like you get, to, you get to pick the words. Just whatever it is, I'll read it verbatim. Because that's great. If a company is like, Hey, uh, I mean, as far as uh, as far as Thankmas goes, I mean, it's still a lot of money. But if a company is just like, yeah, we'll give you ten grand or whatever in the in in th all of Thankmas, that's not a ton. But if you get fifty companies donating ten grand each, that's five. Wins. That's five million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that'd be epic. <laughs> Easy peasy, baby. Easy yeah. peasy. Because that's what I want to do. I want to figure out a way of getting companies to sponsor it more than people having to like, we're in a recession. It's not a secret that it's hard to live and get money. <laughs> it's not a secret that I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that people donate a lot and I'm very thankful and thank you for doing it and please keep doing it. But at the same time, I'm like, I know everybody doesn't have a lot of money all the time. Yeah. But you know who does have money and likes to... Big Pharma. Big Pharma. Anyway, let's go to an ad read. Ethan, have you ever been out drinking? All your friends have got a beer. They got a tall boy in your hand. And you're like, man, I don't really feel like drinking beer right now. But I also want to fit in and look cool with a tall boy of my own. Yeah, I've thought about that before. But there's, there's not really an easy way to do that. What? Of course there is. It's called Liquid Death. Liquid Death? What's that? Liquid Death is a new healthy beverage brand out there that looks just like tall boys of beer. Tall boys of beer? They got iced tea. They got water. They got sparkling flavored water. They have a new thing called the Grim Leafer, which, you know what I'm thinking? The Grim Leaker, baby. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, shit. Not only are they thinking about you and social situations, but they're thinking about the environment as well. And that's why they don't use any plastic, baby. Plastic bottles aren't recyclable, and it just gets sent to landfills, all right? People keep thinking it's recyclable, but you gotta see the number on it. A lot of times it's not recyclable. And Liquid Death also donates a portion of profits to, uh, from every single can sold to help kill plastic pollution. So it's helping you and it's helping the environment, baby. Oh, oh baby, you hear that? Cracking open a cold one. You know why it's called liquid death? Because oh. it's gonna kill your thirst. Lickety oh, split, man. baby. It, uh, it honestly, they are super, super good. I've been trying to cut back on soda, uh, and Liquid Death helps with that a lot because it's just sparkling water. So it gives me a little tiny kick, a little bit of spiciness in my mouth. I go, ooh, that, why is it spicy? Why that is it so good? Spicy. Uh, they have tons of different flavors, and yeah. also I, I really love that they've made their tall boys even taller recently. <laughs> These are 19.2, uh, almost 20 ounce cans. Uh, so it keeps me drinking for a long time, yeah, and it's that's, wonderful. That's 568 milliliters for any of you who don't speak stupid. So, if you want to get a healthy beverage on Amazon or at a retailer near you, and Brain Leak listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase! Available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash brain!
That's liquiddeath.com slash B-R-A-I-N. Wow, you can go get yours today. Go check it out. Liquid Death is awesome. It's very tasty. Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash brain. Liquiddeath.com slash B-R-A-I-N. Do you think you'd ever go to space? Am I coming back? Yeah. I mean, like, somebody's like, oh, Virgin Atlantic or whatever. Oh, no, that's like a plane thing. But I mean, like, somebody's like, we can bring you up to the International Space Station, and then you get to come back, like, a week later. Um, yes, but I think that in our current climate, I would be hesitant due to the flack. I see. You know? How very <laughs> diplomatic of you. How very political of you. Am I wrong, though? I want to do cool shit, but I don't want people to get mad at me. <laughs> exactly! I'm too anxious for this <laughs> world. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see space. I think that, wasn't it, it was William Shatner that went into space and then he, like, had an existential crisis, right? He was like, He turned wow, into a different person. Seeing space made me actually, like, really sad that we're killing our fucking planet. And we're all douches towards one another. <laughs> how, how far up did they go, though? I didn't think that they, like, went into space, went into space. I don't know. I thought they just saw the, the rim. <laughs> Isn't it like a hundred kilometers up you get out of the atmosphere? How far away is atmosphere? <laughs> From the surface of the planet up to as far as 10,000 kilometer, 6,214 miles. After that, mm -hmm. the atmosphere blends into space. So it's 10K, not 100K. Okay. But how far did they go? How far did Shatty go? <laughs> <laughs> I think being offered to go to space is such a... Literally one of those things where it's like, you're not going to be able to do this again. Yeah. I think I would have to. Um, They went 100 kilometers or 62 miles up, which is, that's not space. Yeah. Whatever. He said he went to space and then he was like, wow, we're so tiny and minuscule and we mean nothing to this entire cosmos. And I'm like, yeah, I don't need to go to space to figure that out. Like, it's pretty obvious. I wouldn't go to space. You wouldn't? As much as I love space and I think everything's cool, I think it would be miserable to go into space. I'd be too anxious. I would puke my ring up. I just would not have a good time, I don't think. And plus, I am deathly afraid of heights. Like, so much so. I did that VR thing, the BBC game, where you go out from the International Space Station, you walk out. And it, like, looking out the window and that freaked me the fuck out. I would, I was terrified. Are you talking about like you are in space, like in uh, like floating around, or no, no, you're no. in a ship? I mean, in the space station. Okay, because that's uh, not as bad, but I still think I'd be scared. But do you have a problem on planes when you look down and you see the ground? No, because it's not. It it gets to like a point where I have this thing. If I'm like lying on grass for too long and I'm staring up at the sky, I start getting like. I don't know what you'd call it. I start feeling like I'm gonna like fall into the sky. You have like weird vertigo? Yeah. So it's it's really bizarre where like I'm that far up that I know there's nothing below me and like the existentialism of that would freak me out and I would panic quite severely. Interesting. Like in a plane, it's like, I've done it so much now that I'm not that scared anymore. Turbulence still freaks me out, but it's like, how often does that happen? But in space, it's like one thing goes wrong and it all goes wrong. And then I'm floating in space forever, which is kind of cool. I think that would be, hmm. That would be maybe one of the worst ways to go, I think. It would be yeah. so sad. You're floating, floating in space. You, you're like, you're like Sandra Bullock in Gravity. Gravity. I haven't seen the movie, but I it's, it's can infer that, that that's what happens. Um, but it's, there's no gravity in space. What a fucking you're, stupid idea. <laughs> you're floating around and you just slowly see the world just uh, I mean we'd probably be long dead before that unless you got a so suit on and you're like oh. Wee! well you got a suit yeah I found out I can't remember if we talked about this already but when you are in space and if you get exposed to the elements of space you don't just go and explode no. from the pressure no. it takes it takes like a like 30 to 90 seconds you yeah. just like slowly suffocate it's like all the air in your lungs gets fucked and your skin gets too cold and you just, I think you basically just, it's like hypothermia. Yeah, you just, you just like get hypothermia and you suffocate because there's no air. Yeah. 
But I thought I thought that it was like an instantaneous. I thought because of pressure, you just like explode. That would be kind of cool to explode like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would want because you wouldn't feel anything. Yeah, it's like the the thing about the ashes we had before, which is like, poo, send it everywhere. But if like I'm raining down on the earth from above, bits of me everywhere. Well, you wouldn't go down in there. Well, if I was, if I was on the International Space Station and then I went outside and then I exploded, I probably would, because the International Space Station is just falling around the Earth all the time. It's not. Uh... It's like still affected by Earth's gravity. I think that if I went into space, I would have a little bit of. I think anybody would have a little bit of an existential crisis. But just seeing how massive the Earth actually, is, I don't. I think it's one of those things where it's like. That would be the only time you could sort of comprehend how big it is because it's right there in front of your eyes. Yeah, and you're just like, true. oh my God. And Earth is a relatively small planet still, yeah. comparatively. Even in our own solar system, it's tiny. Mm -hmm. And there's, oh, you think that there's other life out there, yeah? Yeah, there has to be. I'm not talking about like little green men. I mean, there could be little green guys running around. Who knows? <laughs> 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 But there has to be like bacteria or something somewhere. It can't just be nothing anywhere. I think that the, I mean, it's basically impossible, isn't it? The, the, the possibility of, out of the hundreds of trillions of, I mean, space is constantly expanding and there's trillions and trillions of galaxies and hundreds and trillions, like an infinite number of planets. The, the probability of Earth being the only planet in the entire solar system that can and does sustain life? Well, not in the solar system. In the wor in the in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the only planet in the world that has life. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And other people are like, well, we're the only ones that are intelligent life. How do you know that? Because I, people yeah. sometimes are like, if there's other intelligent life, they would have reached us by now. That's bullshit. Why? We haven't reached anybody else by now. Just because there's intelligent life, that doesn't mean that they're vastly more intelligent than probably is. But the universe is so fucking huge. Why would they have reached us by now? That doesn't make any sense. That's like, I'm looking it up. I'm not, it's not that I'm not paying attention to you. Because um, I love this trail that we've gone down. This is my jam. But that's like Fermi paradox stuff, which is uh, discrepancy between the lack of conclusive evidence of advanced extraterrestrial life and the apparently high a priori likelihood of its existence. So it's like, yeah, stuff could exist, but how far along are we in? Because there's like a civilization scale, like Dyson Sphere versus like us. Kurska Sack did videos on it much better than I will butcher it. But it's like... They, we could be the furthest along intellectually or something else could be so far along that they don't really give a shit about us anymore. Yeah. Or we could just be alone and we'll never know. But it just takes so long for anything to get anywhere, even in our own solar system, or not solar system, in our own galaxy, that I don't even think we're the only life in our galaxy. That despite all the... Look at a fucking James Webb telescope picture. Look at that and tell me there's nothing else out there. Just look at it. Look at it with your fucking stupid look eyes. Look at that picture of James Gunn's ass. Look at that. <laughs> look at that picture of James Gunn's telescope. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me there's nothing out there. Guardians of the Galaxy? That's a documentary. Yeah. Drax there's is so real. many Chris Pratt's out there. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> there's that quote. I don't remember who it's from. But it's like there are two possibilities. One, that we are not alone and there's other species out there. Or two, we are alone. Both are equally as terrifying. I don't think both are equally as terrifying. I think if we were the only ones out there, I think that it's far more terrifying than other species existing. What's even scarier is that we're all on this planet then bickering about our skin colors and going like, ah, you're different than me. I don't like it. <laughs> God, fuck it. We're it's all like, doomed. Yeah, it's like, there's bigger things to do. Let's go to Mars. Let's have a fucking party there and not have a weirdo bring us there first. Ethan, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me, handsome young man, prime of my life. You're looking at this beautiful beard, how it's perfectly shaven, how it's cleaned up, how there's no stray hairs, how I look like a beautiful baby boy all the time. I was thinking about that this morning. I woke up and I went, how does he stay so manicured? 
Well, I use a little secret thing called Harry's. Harry's? What's Harry's? Can I get a harmonization on that? Harry's. Wait, Harry, Harry's. Harry, Harry, Harry's. <laughs> Look, I got a, a nice little kit from Harry's. You know, I was thinking, man, how am I even going to use this? Because I have a full beard, a facial beard. And how am I going to shave my face? I'm not going to shave all of this beautiful bush off. But what it did help me do, they got razors and a little blade on the back, single blade. Ooh. Nick little, some of these little hairs right here. Ooh. Even between my eyes. I'm a hairy boy. I got a uni brow. I just took that bad boy, a little shaving cream. They supplied that as well. I went a little... Really? I took a shower right before this podcast. I smell like their body wash. Really? It had fig, figs in it. It smells really good. You smell. Smell me. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, man. But, uh, Sean, to get a shave so nice like that, it must be so expensive. I just want a, just a little bit of a more cost-effective solution. That just sucks. It would be really expensive if you were going anywhere else, but if you're going to harrys.com slash brain, <laughs> the starter set is a $13 value for just $3. For just $3? Yeah. It includes five blade German engineer razor. That's how you know it's good. Precision engineering. Weighted handle, foaming shave gel, oh. and a travel cover. You know how you're trying to get your razor out of your bag, and then you're like, oh, it's scary in there. I don't want to cut my fingers. Yeah. You won't. Not with this. It's not. It's not going to happen. Man, but what if I? What if I need refills? You know, I hate going to the store and getting the thing. I just wish they would appear for me. They have that. You can do that. What? Yeah, you can schedule a replacement. I can just schedule it on the internet. Yeah, and Harry's has the highest customer service satisfaction in the shaving industry. What the fuck? Bet you didn't even know that about him. Bet you didn't even know Harry. Now you do. He's your best friend. Now I do. If I wanted to get this, where do I where do I go again? You go to harrys.com slash brain. Was that harrys.com slash brain? Sure was. Wow. I can't wait to shave everything. I'm going to shave the world. How many more years do you think the human race has on this planet? I'm that, like, nihilist where I'm, I I talk to Evelyn about it and she's like, no, we'll go to other planets and, like, however long it takes. And I'm like, I think within, like, a thousand years humanity might be dead. I think we're like, I don't, I don't think that we're going to be that species that, like, keeps going, like in sci-fi. I think we're going to die on this planet, probably. <laughs> I, I think you saying a thousand years is honestly kind of generous, <laughs> if I'm about, honest. I give us about three months. <laughs> Yeah, I think literally within like a couple hundred years, we could all be dead. I don't know. Our planet is already fucked. Yeah, we're dying. We're dying at an alarming rate. Yeah. Maybe a couple hundred is is a little bit. Dude, we're always dying. We're born to die. How fucked is that? Dude, stay dying. Huh? And how lucky are you that in all the vast cosmos that's out there, and maybe, maybe not life out there, you exist at the same time as Brain League. Oh, man. Consider shout yourselves out, shout hashtag out leakers. blessed. Shout out leakers. Dude, leakers, drip, drip. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. We're, we're talking about the, the infinity of space and how pointless it all is and how we shouldn't be bickering. It's like, but please waste your time listening to our podcast. <laughs> please listen to the podcast, guys. Please spend Come an on. hour every Wednesday going, ha, 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 funny boys. Ha, 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 they talked about shit again. Wow. Oh, see, you brought it up. Oh, do you think no, you shit yourself I... in space? <laughs> Oh, we can't! We can't make this every episode. I did enjoy tweeting out at YouTube if the CEO would shit themselves. Yeah, that is funny. Because <laughs> YouTube creators <laughs> tweeted out about Brain Leak hitting 100k, which is very nice. Um, and I was like, I don't want to be that on the Brain Leak account being like, Wow, thank you so much. That means the world, YouTube. <laughs> like, <laughs> you think the CEO would ever shit themselves? I bet. I bet Susan did. Susan had to. Susan's a leaker. Susan's got to be a leaker. I wonder if we can get Susan on the on the pod. Even though, she's not. Is she? She's not anymore. I know that she's not anymore. But is she still currently? Uh, I don't think so. I think like in transition. With I think CEOs? it was just instantaneous that she left and somebody else took over. 
Man, she's probably not under NDA anymore. She can come on the podcast and and leak all about. Oh, that's what our podcast turns into. It's just whistleblowing. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. We baby. just have anonymous people with like the black shadowed outline, and it's like. Yeah, I've shit myself Witness 10 protection. times before. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, the government are spying on us, and, like, there's chips in all of our salsa. That's great, but have you ever shit yourself? Like, has the president ever shit himself? It's like, I, I, I can't say anything about that. <laughs> oh, man. That would be so funny, actually, if every time we have a guest on, we, like, do the normal guest thing, and then it's like... And now a word from an anonymous source. And it's very obviously still them talking about a time that they shit themselves. It's but like it's a witness protection. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Or you just have a guest on and you don't tell them that you're going to do that to their face. So the entire episode is just them in witness protection. Oh, yes. God. This, this is the worst podcast that's ever existed. They're like, how can two white men get any stupider? <laughs> well, should we go to Outlook.com and give some funny advice? I think so. Whoa, roll the intro, baby. Whoa. This one comes in from wonderful Rachel. It says, hi, leaky boys. I like that. How do I tell my roommate to stop eating all my food while I'm at work? I try to only get foods that I think he might not take, but he inhales it like Kirby. Lots of love, Rachel. I think cyanide is just an easy solution if you just put that in there. Yeah. You only have to do it once. I mean, then all your meals will be from jail anyway, so... Meal prep! Not necessarily. Because you say, Hey, just letting you know, I put cyanide in the food. All right? You tell them that. Yeah. Is it illegal to have cyanide? Probably. If I'm honest, I don't even really know what it is. <laughs> I know it's, it's just, a chemical. It tastes like almonds, apparently. Oh, okay. Um, you say, Well, then you can use something that's not illegal, like rat poison, a lot of rat poison or something. And enough, enough rat poison that if it were a rat man, it would kill the rat man. Okay, that's how you know mm. the dosage. You yeah. say, hey, I put rat poison in all the food. Then they go, <laughs> and then they eat all the food because they think that you were joking. It's not your fault that they didn't believe you. Hmm? That's true. That's not really attempted murder or murder or anything. That's just fuck around, find out. That's just attempted communication. <laughs> Successful <laughs> communication. <laughs> Okay. You eat my and food, then... you die. Huh. Oh! Even better, because they won't die and you won't go to prison. You, <laughs> and this is a funny, this is a funny, okay? You say, hey, I'm starting this new diet uh, because my tummy's a little, a, little, a little goofed and gaffed up, okay? You bring this up casually however you want. <clears throat> you... To protect yourself, you can start labeling the food maybe with like a red sticker or something. I don't know. Whatever you want. You start lacing all of your food with laxatives. Ooh. Okay? So then in their mind, because then they're not just like, oh, I ate this random food, blah, blah, blah. They remember that you said, oh, yeah, I had to change my diet. This is how you make them stop eating their food. Because then if you lace it with laxatives, they're going to be shitting their britches all over the place. Yeah. It always comes back around on this podcast. Easy. I'd say a good way to get your roommate to stop eating your food is just a knife. Like a good old-fashioned threatening. Yeah, you cut up the food and portion it out so that they can have theirs. <laughs> you can have yours. <laughs> and I, I don't think you can like, oh, while they're eating their food, you go, if you don't eat, if you don't stop eating my food, I'll kill you. No one likes that. That's stupid. You got to go into the room while they're sleeping. Like... Have a good night with your roommate. Cook their favorite meal, which apparently seems to be everything in your house anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Put on their favorite Cook their movie. favorite meal, which is your favorite meal. <laughs> <laughs> Put on their favorite movie. We all have a good time. They go to bed like, oh, honk me, me, me. They just go really sleepy and they're like, oh, what a great day. I love my roommate. You break into the room. In the middle of the night, wake them up with a knife to their throat. And you say... Listen here, Buster Brown. You've been eating all my fucking food, and I'm tired of it. 
If you don't stop eating my food, I'm going to start eating bits of you. Oh. And then you walk out of the room slowly backwards. I have a spinoff of that. An addendum, if you will. That won't get you in trouble, okay? You hire some sort of president impersonator. A president that's dead, so maybe like Nixon or Jimmy Carter or something. Okay? Obama. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> That's how you find out. <laughs> and then you have them in the middle of the night go in there and they go, I'm the ghost of Richard Nixon. Oh, oh. <laughs> I am not alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, you need to stop eating your, your roommate's food or I will haunt you for a thousand years. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I bet Richard Nixon was super good at motorboating. He would just go. (laughs) (laughs) He was all about it. Yeah. I mean, he loved water. He kept going past those water gates all the time. Ah, yeah. Was that Nixon? Watergate? I think so. I think so. I don't remember. How how do I? I don't know if I know your history at all. Nixon? Who was it? Watergate. Was it Nixon? It was Nixon. Hey. Good memory. And then they'll be so shaken up, they'll go, oh, I had a premonition in the night. And then they'll go to the go to the food container, the fridge, if you will. And they'll go, oh, I want to so bad. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength <laughs> to do it. <laughs> I don't know if that's enough to scare them. I think you need to rig, like, the fridge door to have a shotgun in it. Like, they open up and it's just, boom! And they're going to go flying across the room and record it. Because you can make money off that. Which will be easy for everyone at this point, because everyone's been making shit in Tears of the Kingdom. So just use your knowledge from there. Transfer it into real life. God. Everyone's turning turning into Kevin McAllister. Use a Rube Goldberg machine that, like, just start Pavloving your roommate to, like, give him a treat. (laughs) There's there's a way, like, the episode of The Office is like, do you want a mint, Dwight? Every time he shuts down his Uh computer. You can do that. You can trigger a sound. Like, every night... You just play that sound in the background. You're like, man, I'm hungry. I just eventually they'll start getting that in their head. Did we talk about it on here on how we wanted to make a Rube Goldberg machine? Yeah. Oh, we should make a Rube Goldberg machine to upload our videos every day. Yeah. So every every time. Oh, man. I want like the Wallace and Gromit one or, or something where you like lie down and it's like, oh, good morning. And then like it makes you cough. Cheese, Gromit. Cheese. <laughs> Wensleydale. <laughs> I, I want that, and it make, make, makes my coffee, and it makes me, like, a breakfast sandwich. Oh, that would be so- I need to start making more breakfast sandwiches. Me too. I love a good scrambled egg, crispy bacon, mm. Mm. maybe a little avocado, maybe not. Mm. Mm. Get a little if you're sauce feeling it. If you're feeling Californian, a little <laughs> avocado. Mm, a little Californication. Anyway. We don't have the right hot pe- chili peppers on the podcast. The whole band. <laughs> Just kill Why your not? roommate. Ethan, you know how money can leave your wallet so fast? You know when you see it zipping out, you look at your bank account and it's like, ah, God, that's so quick. You know what I call that? Rocket money. <laughs> that's, that's the, <laughs> Wait, that's, that's the it, name of the, the thing. The money leaving? <laughs> <laughs> it's just called rocket money. I'm just trying to make a thing about how fast money is. Wouldn't that paint them in a bad light? <laughs> because the money is leaving your bank account fast. No, because they're trying to save you money. <laughs> oh. No more will you have to worry about that, Ethan, because Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills. All in Man, one place. With everything happening uh, in the world these days, I have so many damn subscriptions, and I don't even know how much I'm spending each month on all of them because there's so many. But Rocket Money can help you figure that out and cancel those unwanted subscriptions that are just sucking your bank account dry. We have ADHD. We can't remember anything. I don't even know my own birthday. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Oh, man, stop throwing your money away. You can cancel those unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses in an easy way. You don't have to do it yourself. You can use Rocket Money to help you save that money. And you could try it free for 30 days, just enough time to try it, and then completely forget about it. In fact, 
Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about. You don't want that. You don't want to sign up for something and be like, oh, this app. Oh, it's only $4.99. I'll use the thing to put a filter on my dog's face. No, because then you forget about it and then it just keeps accruing and accruing and accruing. And then suddenly, 10 years later, you spend a million dollars on an app. And most people don't even realize how much they're spending every month. Most Americans think they're spending around $80 a month on subscriptions, which is a lot. $80 a month? But the actual cost is closer to $200! That's over double, baby! If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money to help you help you out. You can go to rocketmoney.com slash brainleak. Quick, simple, easy. Hit it away! Hit him with it again, Ethan! That's rocketmoney.com slash brainleak. Go there, save yourself some money. Get rid of all those nasty subscriptions. Manage your subscriptions the easy way with Rocket Money. Next question! This comes in from Maisie. My dearest Sean and Ethan, why? Regards, Maisie. Maisie, I would like question why not? And to go even further, to add an addendum to that, to just extrapolate just a tiny bit, I would say who, what, when, why, how, where? Like, like where, yeah. Like just, just get the whole gamut of emotions there. And if you really break down the why, you'll get to the crux of humanity, which is, you know, like us on this planet, are we killing it, are we not? Are you investing in your 401k? Like. Like Tesla's going up and down, you really want to diversify that portfolio and just like get yourself a nice smattering, a nice smorgasbord of just friends to share in your life with you. Yeah, and I think off of that too, you really want to try and figure out earlier uh, in, in adulthood whether a SEP IRA or a Roth IRA is a better fit for you. So in in a sense, do you want to pay the taxes up front or do you want to pay them uh, on the back end? Um, and so if you if you can afford it, I think paying them up front is a little bit better because then you get a little treat later on. You go, ooh, money, and I don't have to pay taxes on it. But with that being said, you have to pay those taxes up front. So. If, if you start off young as well, like you start off young enough, like you can have a house by the time you're like 22, 23, um, like really invest in property there. And that that's a that's a revenue engine for you. That's a revenue stream that you can just bring further into the rest of your life and just start accruing more properties for yourself. By the time you're 30, you will have a nice nest egg for yourself. Mm hmm. You know, um, you need to have your money making money. Your money's got to be making money or else, you know, what are uh, what are you really doing with your life? You know, it's all about the grind set nowadays. All so if you're, about the grind if set. you're thinking about like waking up and going and get yourself a Starbucks or whatever, like that's great. But just maybe start, maybe try starting investing that and like you can turn one dollar into a million dollars in about six months if you really know what you're doing. Yeah, and you know you need to be making sacrifices in your life uh, in order to succeed. So you know you might you might be thinking, oh well, my brother my brother's birthday is coming up. Would you rather take the time to to visit your mother and spend time with your lo loved ones, or would you rather stay on the grind, stay motivated, stay focused to ensure a better future? for yourself. Yeah, insulate. Because if you don't have any outside influence and you really just get productive and like waking up in the morning, you can like brush your teeth while in the shower, watching a TV show while you make breakfast, like learn a language while you're in the car on the way to work or the train or whatever. Uh, you probably should just take the train actually, just save yourself that extra little bit of money and every ounce of your life can be productive. And then when you're like 60, 75, you can die knowing that you worked hard. Synergy. Yeah, frictionless. <laughs> uh, so that's why. This one comes in from Paul C. And they say, uh, what is the most effective way to put someone very high up in the air, preferably without them knowing? That is a good question. Because we, we always get the same things about like, how do I kill someone? How do I hide the body? How do I get better in life? But this one, this one's a good one for, this is a thinker. Man, how do I get somebody high in the air without them knowing? Got it. Oh. You blindfold them. Every good story starts off with blindfolding someone. And you say that you're going to take them to their favorite restaurant. 
Now, the favorite restaurant is probably like a little bit away. You had a reservation. You thought about them. Maybe leave this for like a birthday or an anniversary. And then you tell you blindfold them and say, oh, we have to take a bus because or like we're going to like your favorite activity. We have to take a bus, though, to get there. And then you blindfold them, you take them along, you give them earbuds so they can't really ha like hear anything. And then suddenly, boom, they're on a plane, which is the bus of the sky. And mm. then as they're in and they're seat belted and they're getting ready to go, the only thing that will tip them off is the rumble of the engines. And then by then it's too late. Then they're in the air. Yeah, and you can even, if they're, if they're curious about the rumbling of the engine, you can just say, it's an old bus. It rumbles a lot, all right? Fossil fuels, baby. Yeah, we have to drive to get to the bus. And then you put them on the bus, and then they're in the air. Pressure differential. Synergy. I think that maybe if you want to make it a little bit more fun for them, and a little bit more involved, because I, I think that every good activity, there needs to be a good uh, a good level of, of, of back and forth, you know? And you want people to be excited about it. So you say, hey... I've really been getting into cosplay recently. What if we did a little cosplay together? And they go, ooh, a little cosplay, I'd love that. And and then you go, okay, I'll make it easy for you. I'll set it all up, okay? So you say, what's been hot recently? Again, Tears of the Kingdom, okay? You say, I'm gonna dress up as Zelda or I'm gonna dress up as Link. You're gonna be Tingle, okay? <laughs> and then you get them in the Tingle costume, you tie a hundred balloons to them, they go up, 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 up in the air. And they won't even realize it until yeah. they go, oh, you didn't shrink. I was getting farther away. I also realized they said, how do I put someone very high in the air? So you could just hotbox someone. And that's also getting them very high. But they're not in the air, though. How do we solve the air part? Well, if they're high enough, like already, they won't really know anything. So you can get them into the air without them knowing because they want to know what the fuck is going on. I think that would maybe be the worst thing ever, is getting super high and then slowly ascending into the oh air. Oh my <laughs> you just, gosh. You just can't stop. Getting high on a hot air balloon would be horrific. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the worst idea ever. Put the, also, like, hot air balloons are spooky. Yeah, I fucking, I will never get in one of those. It's hot air putting a fucking balloon in the sky and you're in a basket. That's the stupidest thing humanity has ever come up with. God, what if there's a rat or a mouse in there? They're gonna chew through that basket. <laughs> they love that shit. What if uh, I get scared and chew through the basket? What if I shit uh, myself up there? <laughs> oh God, the hot air from the shit will, will make it go <laughs> higher. I think you should just feed your friend an edible or seven. Get them, like, fucked so high that they can't even, like, feel feelings anymore. They start smelling color. And you put the fucking weather balloon on them, or ten, and just let them, like, go. And their vision will start, like, they'll be so high that they'll start going up, but it won't look perspective-driven. It'll just start, like, warping around the earth, like one of those ball cams. So their vision will just get like fish-eyed as they go up. Like they don't see the earth getting further away. They just see it getting perspective warped. Friends, to keep you hooked for the next episode, okay? Maybe I'll remember to tell the story. Maybe I won't. But for next week, or maybe the week after, depending on when I remember, <laughs> I got to keep you wanting to come back. I will tell the story of uh, my worst experience of accidentally taking way too many edibles. Oh. Never been told to the internet before. There you Never go. Never been told. I have a lesser story so. about getting high, but I, I never got high after that or really before that. So if you subscribe now, follow Brain Leak, you get all those stories. And then the next episode will be the high times with leaky boys. Yeah. Getting high and leaky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we'll just Maybe. be smoking weed as we do the episode. <laughs> it'll be, it'll look like that Elon Musk clip from Joe Rogan, from Jim Brogan's experiment. <sighs> Jamie, pull it up. <laughs> it turns out Jamie's never been real. <laughs> Jamie? Uh, well, yeah, that's how you get high in the sky and they don't even know. You're welcome.
You're welcome, leakers. Yeah, You're we welcome. look forward to seeing you in a future episode when you ask us, how do I hide the body of the friend I killed by accident? This one comes in from Jared. What is the best way to get your sister afraid of water? Oh, oh, oh that's a good one. I think this one's like a little bit involved, but if you can figure out, um, if you can figure out, you know, time and shit like that and you travel back into it, you just say, hey, your 16th birthday is coming up, huh? Sweet That's 16. a big one. And I want to make it special for you. So I booked you a cruise ticket. Ah! A cruise ticket. And they go, what? A cruise? And you go, uh-huh. A cruise, baby. You go back in time and you bring them aboard the Titanic. And you say, hey, enjoy your ride. When you said we were going back in time, I thought like you put a little time into it or something. I didn't mm -mm, think. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, this is this is very involved then. It's very involved. It's gonna take a little bit of time. <laughs> no pun intended, but you'll get there. Put them on the Titanic. You keep them in one of the lower deck rooms. One night they feel a little rumbly tumbly and they go, "Oh, must have just been the turbulence. <laughs> it must have been something I ate." <laughs> and then the fucking room starts to fill with water. They're gonna freak out real quick. Yeah, make sure they're in the front too, where it like sheared the first five compartments. So they go under faster. One time I watched a real time animation of the Titanic sinking. It's like two hours long and I watched all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I watched it in a McDonald's parking lot. <laughs> On your this Tesla is, screen. This is not even a fake story. I actually did this. I think you should, again, sticking with the theme of like breaking in in the middle of the night. You get a face cloth, you dampen it, and then you just put it over your sister's face. And you pour a little water on top of it. And you just waterboard the shit out of them. There's gotta be... <laughs> There's gotta be, especially back in like 2016 when the prank era of YouTube was at a real time high. There had had to have been a waterboarding prank. <laughs> waterboarding gone wrong. <laughs> waterboarding prank gone wrong. That has to be the most terrifying thing that can happen to a human is to be waterboarded. Yeah. So in the middle of the night too, just yeah. like you're all of a sudden you're you're having a nice lovely dream prancing through a forest and then all of a sudden you're drowning in real life yeah the water starts rising in the dream and you're like trying to get through it and then you oh, wake do you up. think that would happen probably yeah. and then they piss themselves <laughs> you know this is not at all related but to go on a tiny tangent about dreams have you ever had a dream have you ever had a dream <laughs> <laughs> i really thought you were just gonna launch into the bin <laughs> that you could no, do anything <laughs> Have you ever had a dream where in real life, like, somebody knocks on a door, but it happens in your dream and your brain, like, instantaneously adapts to it? Yep. How does our brains work so fast? They don't. Well, like, it makes sense. <laughs> and it's like, I heard the knock in real life, but it transferred into my dream in perfect timing. Yeah. Twitch perfect timing compilation. Oh. How? They How? brain. Oh, uh, the do. <laughs> Leak. <laughs> Right? I, I have it like with my alarm or something and it turns into like a car horn or like an intercom or something in my dream. It's like, whoa, sick music they got in here. Do 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 Evelyn Evelyn hates that one and I hate it too. She calls it my clown music to wake me oh, up. Oh man. Really quick, this is gonna piss everybody off. But I think that both of us should play our alarm sounds. So then people can go, ah, oh, relatable, that's my alarm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> elevator it's, ass music. It's that do 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 in the middle of it. That's by the time I'm awake and I'm hearing it and I'm like, oh, kill me. Ah, ah! <laughs> this is my alarm. Like a fancy doorbell. Oh yeah, baby. And then it used to be. Wait. Shush, 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 shush. This is my. This was my text alert tone for a long time. Oh. But now, and I often forget to do it. 
I have. Uh, they should sponsor us. So I'm not going to say the name. <laughs> I have an, a water-cooled mattress cover. Oh, yeah. I have it, too. But it vibrates. And so it vibrates me awake. Yeah. Also, it stimulates so does, my prostate. So, so does my whoop. They should also sponsor us. You whoop. Because I actually love this thing, which I guess why we're the sponsors now that I'm already shilling it. But it um, it's like if you get enough sleep, so you're in like you're out of your REM cycle between like an hour time period, it'll wake you up when you're out of that cycle. So you don't wake up like, what year is it? <laughs> you don't wake up in a death nap. Yeah. So you wake up God. and it's like, ah, I'm awake. Hello, world. <laughs> Instead of, ah, ah, make it stop, put me back in. <laughs> what were we answering? I don't know. Does it matter? <laughs> nah, we're tell funny. Us, tell us at home, what's your alarm sound, huh? Yeah, and rate our answers between one and ten. Rate our answers? Yeah, for Like that our question. alarm sounds? Oh, for that question. Oh, okay. Oh, how do you make your sister afraid of water? Yeah, waterboard them. Yeah. No, no, successful episode in the bag. Look, look at this. Got the bag. Here's the episode. It's in the bag right now. Uh, whoever's editing, make sure to put some great sound design in for the bag sounds. Um, yeah, for the people at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, Sean, rustle around the bag real quick. Oh, man. What's even in there? What I a bag. I wish why, is I it, why is it made out of human skin? Oh, well, you know, we all have hobbies, don't we? <laughs> we all. <laughs> <laughs> I saw such a funny clip. It would be really fun to have him on the podcast. I don't know if he would, but I saw a funny Theo Vaughn clip where he's like, man, the skin that your balls are made out of, that's the, some of the softest material. Imagine having a, a pair of loafers with, oh. made out of ball skin. <laughs> so soft. Oh, no, and it's fucking covered in hair follicles and hair. Do like, you want oh, hairy shit. fucking ball sack shoes? No, it doesn't have to be hairy. You have to maintain the shoe. They got, they got <laughs> follicles in them, which are all, like, bumpy. Hmm. But maybe it's a nice massage for your feet. Yeah, just turn it inside out. Oh, the inside of your sack probably is real smooth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you all for listening to another wonderful episode of the Brain League Podcast. Remember, next week, maybe we'll tell our stories of being intoxicated on a little bit of herb. And if you want to send us any of your bad advice, send it to questions at brainleakpod.com. That's questions at brainleakpod.com. And we will answer it maybe in the next episode. You never know. Just send us some good ones. If you send it bad, we'll never read it. We'll never read it. So thank you all so much. We will see you next Wednesday on the day of the leak. Stay leaky. Uh, <laughs>